Tonight, we're making vegan zucchini pita pockets. Super good, I'm so excited! I really love this meal, it's so satisfying and it's because I've been making it for a really long time. I often forget about it because I'm like, oh yeah, I've been making this recipe in some version for um, like, I don't know, maybe five years or so now. When we first started making these fried zucchini patties, we just ate them on their own. We just ate these fried patties as our dinner and they were good. Um, by eating just pan fried vegetables, I don't know, got a little boring and as you age, I mean, it doesn't make you feel super good. You get a little gassy. So we started adding other things to them. We started adding sauces, we started adding other vegetables and the real game changer is when we put them inside pita pockets. Oh boy, that was a great choice. It makes it much more of a complete meal. It has um, sauce elements, bread. It just like feels hearty and good. So I've got the approximate steps and ingredients in the description for this video. So if you want to make it, please check them out. I've got everything that you need there and hopefully you can follow along with the various steps in the video. So let's get cooking. So I always take off my rings before these because these make a mess. So the first step is to get the zucchini ready for your fried zucchini cakes. I use two medium sized zucchinis. They make about eight of these patties. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and cut off the top and the bottom to begin with. Then you should put a colander or a sieve over a bowl and you'll be grating the zucchini using a stand grater in there. I typically use the small size in the stand grater because I think it makes a better fry, but you could also use the bigger size. They'll just be a little bit chunkier pieces of zucchini. So as you squeeze it through the sieve or push it against the sieve, you'll see how much comes out of it. It's a ton, a ton, a ton of water. You want that out because when you fry it, it's gonna push it all out anyway. And um, the more water you have, the soggier the fry is gonna be, and you want it to be crispy because they're really good when they have a nice crispy shell. So try and get as much of this out of there as you can. Got a decent amount. Look at that, it's kind of a lot. We can just throw that away, we don't want that. Okay, so while your zucchini is drying off, you need to add some spices. I'm a fan of garlic, onion, and white pepper always, and then um, today I'm feeling like tarragon and thyme, but you can try basil, you could try oregano, you can try whatever you want. And just put a healthy mix of them in there. There's onion, garlic, lots, lot of garlic. Okay, some white pepper, be careful with this. Sometimes it can be a little strong. And then thyme, let's do a bunch, because I like that. Okay, a tarragon list. So you need panko breadcrumbs um, is the biggest ingredient, and then to get some flour. This is something that I just have left over from a previous recipe that I made, so it also has some herbs and stuff in it, but that's what's in there. So a binding agent is gonna work like um, an egg. So you need something with a little bit of fat and a little bit of proteins in it to hold everything together. So I usually use a quaba, I think is how you say it. Um, but it is the um, like water that is in chickpeas. So you just strain a can of chickpeas into your mixture. That works great. Okay, that's good enough. And we'll use these for another recipe. I just throw them into the fridge in a Tupperware and easy peasy. And now we put our dry mixture and our zucchini together. Like that. And then we just kind of squeeze them together and make little meatballs out of it. So you want the mixture to be like even um, in the consistency, not too wet, holds a shape pretty nicely. Let's see how this is doing, what it needs more of. Okay, it's a little uh, wet, so I'm gonna add some more flour in there. So you can use any kind of flour. I um, have really gotten into using chickpea flour. I really like it um, because it uh, makes it really dry. It, it's like a cornstarch almost, but it doesn't have any taste and it fries nicely. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there because I think that'll really help dry it out. But you can also use, you know, white flour, whatever kind of flour you 
pat. So then I'm just gonna form these into little patties. You can make them kind of chubby, almost like little, I don't know, like hamburger patties, I guess, little meatballs. But I make them kind of flat, like that. And I just form them into shapes, like that. Um, and I typically put them straight from making them into the fryer. Um, but you can also make all of them, set them aside, and then fry them all at once, whatever you prefer. Now comes the time to fry. You're going to watch the real-time panicking home chef in this first set here because the first set of patties that I made in this video actually turned out really bad. Um, and I included it in the video because I wanted to show you that, you know, even experienced home chefs making the same exact recipe they've made a bunch of times can screw things up. So don't be too hard on yourself if something goes wrong. Um, it happens to the best of us. This is not as planned. This is the first time that I've used um, our new induction stove for frying, and this is also a new pan. So that's the main reason I had some issues here. Pancake, I'm panicking. In this case, the problem was that the uh, oil and the pan were not at the right temperature in the time when I put the um, patties there, and I also didn't have enough oil for this pan. I'm used to using a nonstick pan, and this is a stainless steel, so I needed to use a little bit more oil than I was used to, which accounts for most of the problems that you see here. Okay, now that I finally gave up on that first batch and just moved on to the second one, I can actually explain what to do to make these fried zucchini cakes. I hope it goes better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. First thing you're gonna wanna do is use a vegetable oil and pour that into your pan and let it heat up so that when you plop in the patties, they're going to be nice and hot and get a hard sear on the outside. You should also be able to just swish the pan around um, with enough oil in it and the patties will move. So that's how you know they're not gonna stick to the bottom as you can wiggle them around. Once I flip them, I almost immediately press them down to squeeze out any excess water there and to get a maximum surface area for the frying. You may need to add a little bit of extra oil at this stage in the process. So you fry on each side for approximately three to four minutes until there's a nice hard crust. You should be easily able to slip the spatula underneath and then flip them over as you see here. It's okay if they get a little dark, don't worry, they're not burnt, they're not going to taste bad. Um, you just wanna make sure that you get a nice crunchy outside. Now comes the best part of the process, assembling your pita pockets. I love to have a bunch of different toppings and sauces to put inside of my pitas. And my favorites with the flavors here are arugula, cucumber, and raw tomatoes, as well as a homemade sriracha mayo and a homemade tzatziki. I'll be making another video about ready ahead sauces that you can um, use for a recipe like this and they're great to keep in the fridge, so stay tuned for that. This meal is super fun because it's really interactive. If you're eating with a partner or a friend, you guys can spice it up, flavor it up as much as you want. You can add whatever vegetables you want. You can add um, a bunch of different toppings, whatever you know floats your boat, whatever you like and whatever tastes good to you. You can really assemble your pita pockets to your own flavor profile. Oh, we just finished our delicious fried zucchini pita pockets. They were so good, as good as I remember them. It had been quite a while since we last month or ate them, but the pockets are so good with all the sauces. You can get a ton of different vegetables in there from the arugula, cucumber, zucchini, tomatoes, all sorts of stuff. And it's just a really yummy, satisfying, comforting meal. Can't recommend it enough. Hope you guys try it.